I'm going to create a simple table. Create table T1, C1 number, C2 date. And now I'll insert a million rows into the table. And of my million rows, the column C1, the numeric column, I'm just setting to a random number between one and a million, and C2, that's just going to be the sys date. So my million rows are inserted, and now create the index on C1. Create index IC1 on T1, C1. Looking at the table itself, select blocks from user tables, where table name equals T1, 2,536 blocks. Clustering factor. Select index name, num rows, clustering factor from user indexes, where index name equals IC1, the index I just created. And we see that IC1 has indexed all 1 million rows, and the clustering factor, 999539. This clustering factor is about as bad as it could possibly be. What it is telling me is that to retrieve all 1 million rows through index lookups would require nearly that number of block reads. So I'm having to read one block of the table for each row that I would retrieve. That's pretty disastrous. And that's going to make this index really unattractive to the cost-based optimizer. So see what execution plans it comes up with for this query. Select star from T1, where C1 between 1 and 100,000. So that's about one-tenth of the table. And hardly surprisingly, Oracle wants to use a full table scan. It's refusing to use my index. What if I force Oracle to use it? If I run the table with a hint, select slash star plus index T1IC1. So run the same query forcing it to use an index, and yes, it does use the index, and the results are disastrous. With a full table scan, it was costed at 694. Using the index range scan, the cost shoots up to 100,000. So Oracle is refusing to use my index because the clustering factor is so bad. Oracle knows that to retrieve 100,000 rows, it's going to have to do 100,000 block reads. If it uses the index, we're scanning the entire table far, far quicker. Now, to fix this problem, I'm going to use a very nice facility that came in with 12C, 12C release 12102, Enterprise Edition. I'm going to use attribute clustering. Set the auto trace off, and I'll begin by dropping the table and recreating it. But this time, I'm going to add some extra keywords. Create table T1, C1 number, C2 date, clustering by linear order of the column C1. There are many other options here. This is just the simplest possible way to use this facility. I'll insert my rows using exactly the same statement that I used previously, populating the column C1 with 1 million random numbers between 1 and a million, and create the index. See what's actually happened. If we look at the size of the table, same as before, 2,500 blocks. But now check out the clustering factor of the index. Now, remember, previously, the clustering factor was nearly equivalent to the number of rows in the table. But now that I've enabled the attribute clustering, the clustering factor has come right down. It's even lower than the number of blocks in the table. This is as good a clustering factor as you are ever likely to see. What's the effect? Well, look at my query. Select star from T1, where C1 between 1 and 100,000. Previously, Oracle said, I'm going to use a table scan for that. What happens now? Index range scan. No need for any hint, Oracle decided to do it. Even though I want one-tenth of the table, Oracle is going to use the index. And the cost has come right down to significantly less than the full table scan. So by enabling clustering, the index that previously the cost-based optimizer thought correctly was useless now becomes a very efficient 
access path.